Today I'm going to assemble the multiplexed RGB shield for an Arduino Uno, which is the shield that I used for the RGB I Love You and the Growth Death video. And on this PCB, you basically have your pin headers, your LEDs, and 12 resistors. So we start by soldering the resistors onto the PCB. And to do that, well, you first open this guy up. And set the LED or the resistors on the working surface. And I like to have them number side up. So we flip them over. And then, once they're all flipped over, we put a little bit of solder on one side of each pad, or one side of each resistor pad pair. And on this shield, there may be three types of resistors, depending on the LEDs. And they're labeled RC, RB, and RA. In this case, I'm using the same size resistors for each one of those. But you may need to change it depending on the RGB LEDs that you're using. So then, so I'm going to take my glasses off. We solder one side. Of the resistor. To the PCB. Okay, and then at this point, when you have one side of each resistor soldered, I would take a look at the resistors and make sure that you've soldered them all well. And at this point, if one of them's sticking up, it's the best time to make the alignment better because you only have to solder one side in order to make the alignment better at this point. Later on, you have to be able to solder on both sides, which is a little bit more difficult. Okay, so checking to make sure that none of the, L or the resistors are sticking out badly, we can go on to soldering the other side of the pad. Okay. 
And then at this point, I like to touch up both sides of the resistor just to make sure I have a good electrical connection. Okay, so optically check all of the resistors to make sure that you have a good connection. This can be fixed later, but it's easiest to do it before the LEDs are on. And once you're happy with how the resistors look, then you can start adding the LEDs. And I start by cutting the leads on the LEDs. And I cut them at about this length, so this is the sharp edge of my cutters. And I sort of put it against the LED and then I just chop it off. And in my case, that allows a small amount of the, the wires to stick out through the PCB. So I do that with all of my LEDs. Okay, now that all our LEDs are cut, we can start placing them in the board. And basically we know which direction they need to go because there's a flat side on the LED. And also if you look in the LED, there's a lead that's sort of a large triangular shape, and that's the common ground. And on the back here, I've written a labeling where it's RC, which is actually the red LED in this case, RB, which is the green LED, RA, which is the blue LED, and they correspond to which resistor goes where in that labeling, and then also the common connection pin. So we know that the triangle pin needs to be on the common pin. So they go in in this direction. So we can go ahead and place the LEDs in the board. And in this case, it's easiest if you take two pens or pencils and just set them down like this. And then place these in the right place. And then take a piece of tape and tape over the LEDs. And then you can flip it over and solder. Well, at this point we can also check that we have them all in the right direction. And so we can see that the PCB is in the right direction and the orientation of these LEDs matches the orientation of these LEDs. So they're all in the right orientation. 
And then we can flip it over and solder just a single pin. And I usually start with the square pin, which happens to be the red LED. And the reason we want to just solder one pin is so that we can actually make the alignment perfect on the LED. If you solder all of them at this point, it becomes very difficult to straighten out the LED. So you just need enough solder to hold the LED in place. And we remove the tape and those LEDs are held. We can go ahead and do that for all of them. Okay, now that we have all the LEDs soldered on in one point, we go ahead and we straighten out the LEDs. So if you look in this direction, you can see that some of them aren't in alignment. And if you look in this direction, you can also see that some of them are bent in different directions. So because we only have one solder joint for each LED right now, it's very easy to straighten all of these out. So to straighten them, I put pressure on, I hold the PCB with one hand, 
leaving this finger free. And I use this finger to gently slide the PCB like this, or not the PCB, the LED like this, while the liquid, or the metal is liquid, the solder is liquid. And by doing that, you can gently slide the LEDs into alignment. But you have to remember to let the solder re-solidify before you remove your finger. And I go through and I do that for each LED so that my RGB matrix looks really good. So after you have aligned all of the LEDs and you're happy with their, basically how their alignment is, the next step is to solder the remaining leads on the LEDs. And before you do that, I would recommend making sure that all of the leads are a good height and sometimes one of them will be longer. And I would actually recommend making them about one millimeter high off of the board. So yeah, it's about one millimeter that I tend to keep them. So just go ahead and snip any of them that are a little bit longer than that because the next step is a lot easier if the leads are on the shorter side. So basically, you're gonna go through with each LED and solder the remaining pins. And I recommend starting with the outside pin, so the opposite outside pin from the one you've already soldered, and that way you don't accidentally unsolder the one pin that you've already soldered in the process. And this is a bit tricky. And don't worry about it if some of your LEDs end up being connected to each other, it's gonna happen. Try not to make it happen, try and fix it as you see it. But probably somewhere on one of your pins that's gonna happen. And you'll find that, or you'll figure out which ones it's happening on when you plug it in. In the final check, but don't worry about breaking your Arduino by having a direct short to ground from VCC to ground because basically everything's always going to be going through a resistor no matter what. So that should prevent, you know, damage to your Arduino.
And when you realize, for example, on D5 right now, I have the green LED shorted to ground. Just take your tip and put it between the two pins and then slide quickly. And that should unsolder a little bit between the pads and um, unshort it. And be careful with these guys because you can put too much solder on them and then it gets more difficult. So in a way, less solder is better. Okay, so now all the LEDs are soldered and have a connection. So at this point, it's important to make sure that all of the connections look like they are good. And this one, for example, they're stuck together again. So I want to take my soldering iron and just put it between the two pins and pull. And that didn't unsolder, but now it has. So. And one of the difficult things about these LEDs is that it's easy to get a good solder joint on one side, but not on the other, just because the pads are so small. So if you want, you can go through and put the soldering iron on the other side. So this time I soldered this way. If I go through and solder again, then I can get a little bit more solder on each pad and then make the solder joint even better. But it's not really necessary to do this. Also, sometimes if you just liquefy the solder and remove it, it's enough to make the connection good on both sides. It's not really necessary to have it good on both sides for the PCB to work, or the matrix to work, but It's ideal to have them be good joints on both sides.
so. I'm gonna add a little bit more to this one. And now it's connected again over here. Clean that up. Okay. And then at this point, we can do the first test of the PCB to make sure it's working before we plug it into the Arduino. So for that, I'm gonna go get a battery. I'll be right back. Now it's time for testing the PCB. Just taking a regular battery pack with leads and the PCB. And this side is ground. So all the A pins control ground, or, or the ground on the LED, and all these numeric pins are the VCC. So you can check each connection by going through. And if you look at this one, something's wrong with this LED. And this is working correctly, and that one's working correctly. This row all the LEDs are working. So we know that the resistors aren't a problem because each one of these pins is connected directly to the resistor. So we know that these two LEDs are actually a problem. So this LED is also having a problem, or not. Okay, so these two LEDs are having a problem. And time to figure out what that problem could be. Um, hmm. Could be that these two LEDs are just dead because I don't see a problem with the solder joints. So I'm just going to mark them with a permanent marker. And now that's working. Interesting. Okay, so it's really just this LED that's causing a problem. So, taking note of which one it is, it's D, or resistor three on, or LED three on this side, so we unsolder D3. Alternatively, it could have just been the ground that was a problem, so I will go ahead and check that actually before I unsolder this guy. Because if ground is disconnected, then it won't light up. So let's check that first, actually. And it's still not working. So we need to unsolder him. T 
to unsolder him, you have to get all of the leads hot at the same time. So, this thing to do is just add a blob of solder. And he'll fall out. And then we have to clean the holes. And to clean the holes, we take our soldering iron, leave it on them, and then hit it on the table. And they come out clean. We do that for the other two. And a little bit more for this guy. And now they're clean. And then we put in a new LED. Checking the orientation. Could have also been that I actually had it in the wrong orientation. But nonetheless, you do the same thing, no matter what. You'd have to remove it, resolder it, using that same method. Solder one pin, check the alignment, use your finger to guide it, check the lead heights to make sure that you like them, and then go ahead and solder all the other pins. Then we go ahead and check him again. And, and it's not working. Hmm. Interesting. And that time I soldered him in backward. <laughs> so, when you have him soldered in backward, you can see that the ground is facing the wrong way. So again, make a blob of solder. Hold it up in the air until it falls out. And then liquefy the solder, smash it on the table until they're all clear. Now we can clean off this LED. So there's probably nothing wrong with him. And put him back in. Making sure we have the right orientation this time. Put him on the table. Slaughter in one pin. Make sure we like the alignment. Solder the rest of the pins. Okay, and then we check the continuity again. So, ground on A0, and he works.
Okay, then now that we've done that simple check, we cut this to the right size and plug him in. And the easiest way to align this is using the Arduino that you're going to finally use. So I stick it in the slot, cut it to size, and then this one doesn't go all the way, so I need to measure it. And we just set this guy on. And solder him together. So again, I usually solder two pins on these guys and then remove them from the Arduino. Then we go ahead and solder all the rest of the pins. Usually I check the alignment as well, just to make sure that they're not sticking up in weird directions. Okay, and then the next step is to test this. Okay, now it's time to test this using the Arduino. And so what I did is I uploaded the RGB I Love You program to this Arduino Uno. And the reason I used that program is because there's a solid line of each color of LED lit up so you can check every single LED to make sure that each one is working correctly. So we go ahead and we plug this guy into the Arduino Uno, which I've sort of bent my headers a little bit and I have this on backward. Um, plug him into the Arduino Uno and what we're seeing is that all of the greens, or almost all of the greens, on line 12 are on all the time. So that tells me, also, because this green LED isn't lighting up, it tells me that there's a problem between the green LED and ground. So I can go ahead and unplug him. and check on line 12 between, so on diode 20, because it was this LED that was a problem. And if we look here, you can see that the ground and the green LED are shorted. So we just take our soldering iron, and we go between them, and we liquefy the metal, and we pull a little bit, 
and see if that fixed things. We realign him. Plug him into the Arduino. Push the reset button. Realize that my pin header is bent on this guy. And the problem goes away. So, that's basically how you build this guy and how you test to make sure that all the LEDs are working. And in it, I had both the problem that I had a backward LED and an LED that wasn't lighting up for some reason and issues with connecting the LEDs to ground. So hopefully those are all the problems that you're going to run into when you're building this guy. Um, another problem that could actually happen is if you had a resistor that wasn't connected to ground and if that happened what you would see is an entire row of one color not lighting up and that's because no electricity could go from one of these numeric digital pins through the resistor to the LED and then to one of the analog pins. But yeah, those should be the main problems that you have when you're building this.